I'm Gio. Hi, I'm Bart. I'm Nikki. I'm Joe, and you're watching Ask the Feels. And today we have a question from Jojo. You? <laughs> All right, so my mom and I have problems communicating. She's slightly bad tempered and not even approachable. I'm constantly being respectful as I can, but she's always blowing up and getting mad over the small things that I do. Do I just grin and bear it until I'm old enough and stable enough to move out, or do I confront her about the problem? I've gone to family about the problem, and they did not understand my side at all, of this at all, and I've tried writing her a letter because I don't like confrontation, and she did not take it well at all. What do I do? Damn. Damn, this is so tough. So I, I was uh, in a similar situation. Um, me and my dad, we didn't really get along for the longest time. And then when I first started community college, I really wanted to focus on my studies. So I would try to study as hard as I can, but then me and my dad, like, from my perspective, I always felt like he was starting shit with me. Like, he would always come into my room. He does like starting shit. And he would, like, voice things that I feel like aren't really that important, but then because he addressed it, now it becomes a bigger deal than it really is. But it's probably important to him. And then, so, it would get me pissed, and then, because I would feel like, dude, are you, like, did you just come in the room just to start shit with me, like, for the sake of drama, and I'd get really, really pissed. I couldn't study because I'd get, I'd be so angered that I would just wanted to like punch a hole in the wall, or throw a chair out the window. <laughs> and then I realized I was like, the only way for me to achieve my goals at that time is I need to remove myself from him so that I can have more breathing room and I don't feel like there's someone on my back. So once I moved out and I didn't have to deal with them on a daily basis, not only did my relationship with him get way better but also I was able to focus on myself and kind of also reflect on the things that made him want to start shit with me. I was like, oh, I could see like if I did this, he would. Because like a lot of the times when your parents come at you, yeah, they might come at you wrong because they don't really understand you that well, but it's also rooted in something else that you did. Because I think at the end of the day, the parents, they just want kids to be perfect. And even though that's unrealistic, everything that they want you to do is they want you to be like this perfect human being. They just don't know how to communicate it that well. So they just nitpick at all these little things, which probably piss you the fuck off. That's what happened with me. But after that, I was able to understand that and understand where my dad was coming from, uh, coming from. And that helped me approach him when I started to talk to him. They also have like different sources of stress that they might take it out on you mm -hmm. and like not even realize that they're taking out this other stress on you. You just triggered a bad moment for them. Um, I was really similar with my dad. Like there was a time where we went like almost a year without talking, I feel like. Like we Damn. were in the same room but like without talking because he only ever came in to say something negative or mean like about, or I felt it was mean about my room and stuff. And I think it's kind of a respect thing too. Like once you get to a certain age where you can have your own opinions and like you might not agree with them, it's like they still want to be like, I'm in control, it's my house and like, you know, this, I can do whatever, I can make, I can ground you, you know? And I actually got grounded for not making my bed. I never make my bed, ever. Like I just am bad at it, I just don't <laughs> see it, like I don't get it. I'm always gonna take naps and be in there anyway, so like I never made my bed. But just this one day, my dad told me to make my bed, and when he came home from work, it still wasn't made. So he grounded me for two weeks. I'd never been grounded in my whole life. I don't do drugs, I get straight A's, like I was bed. like super good. I was like, yeah, I was super mad, but then it was like once I moved out, we're, we're really similar in the way we approach things. So like we we're constantly just butting heads. And then once I moved out, it was like, oh, I'm getting mad at the same things my dad used to get mad at. Like I was living with my boyfriend and I'd be like, put away your bowl. Make like, your bed. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking ground you for two weeks. I, was like, I picked bed. out the sheets and the pillows and stuff. Yeah. And I do make the bed now. <laughs> mm. My house. There was like a sense of ownership. So. Yeah. If it's kind of like you're disrespecting their place, like they are letting you stay in their place yeah. and it's their place still and you're, you know. Sometimes if you listen, parents have a really legit reason why they're fucking pissed off. But like Nikki said, there's also shit that they bring from like work or whatever. They're just stressed out. And maybe they're bothered by small little things like not making the bed all the time, but they don't say anything because mm -hmm. it's so small. But something might set it off. Like that builds day. up. Yeah, and then they go, fuck, you never make the fucking bed. Mm -hmm. You're grounded for 
you know, three months. Yeah. Whatever. It was exactly like that. Cause he'd be like, I try not to say anything. You know, I try to keep my mouth shut. I try, try to not, you know, don't make a big deal about it. But you're just fucking so messy and like, and you just explode uh, like out of nowhere. But he was also like, he's a CPA, which is an accountant. And like during tax season, it was like oh, crazy. Yeah. And so he would bring that from work. And yeah. like, I would be like, oh, what an asshole. Like I was just chilling here. And then he's just like, went off on me but really like he was super stressed out and like I do the same thing now but just couldn't see it then so kind of if you can put yourself in their mm -hmm. shoes you know it's hard and it sucks and especially if you're like an outspoken person and you like want to speak your mind but can't um, it's hard to keep quiet but a lot of the times kids view their parents as always in control and they have control over their emotions over their what they're doing all that stuff a lot of the times they don't know it's unintentional and they're just reacting and sometimes the best thing is distance makes the heart grow fonder and if you can just just suck it up right now save up all that money and move out because mm -hmm. it's really really hard when um, you're dependent on them and you're trying to come at them as an equal and have a discussion that's not gonna happen yeah they're always gonna treat you as a subordinate they might even always take out their stress on you too because you're submissive or you're basically under them and that's not how it should be but there's what should be and then there's the reality mm -hmm. so i think the best way is to save up move out yeah because since i moved out we have a great relationship now yeah. and same with bart so yeah. move out get the fuck out save the money and you become independent so mm -hmm. Hey guys, thanks for watching Ask the Feels. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. It helps the channel out a lot. Also, if you want to check out my channel, youtube.com slash I make videos five days a week. And if you want to check out more videos, go click right here. This one's a good one. We picked it for you. Go click. But to me, like, open relationships are the wave of the future. But it takes a certain amount of maturity to successfully do those. Um, so if you're younger, I mean, sticking with monogamy is simple because it's just very black and white. Mm -hmm. Whereas an open takes a lot of communication to work effectively. But I guess that's also kind of like just hooking up with somebody. So if you like this person, um, I think having that honest conversation with them, it's like, okay, well, what do you expect? What do you want? I mean, you have these other girls on the side. What do they mean to you? What do I mean to you? And just being a friend.